Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I will tell you about this uh, joint work with uh, Leo Liberty and Matthew Kowalski. And uh, so we work in the field of uh, optimization problems. Uh, in this case, in, in, in particular, in the combinatorial optimization uh, field, and uh, in the in this kind of um, of problems, which is which are uh, uh, called the sparse approximation problems. So let me just, uh, so let me just introduce uh, what is this, this sparse approximation problems. So the, the sparse approximation problems uh, we are given um, a linear system h x equals y, and the idea is to find the next such that um, it is a solution of the system or or it's kind of a solution, so that the, the misfit error of of the solution. Uh, is not bigger than uh, a given uh, value. And on the other side, this, the second goal is uh, for this solution to be as sparse as possible. That means that if we count the number of non-zero components on the on the x, uh, we get uh, just a few of them. So uh, this, this is uh, the two goals of uh, the sparse approximation problems. Uh, Okay, so um, it, uh, this, this kind of problems arise in, in many uh, fields, like for instance, uh, I think that maybe the easiest to explain is the data compression uh, idea. So suppose that I have uh, this uh, signal Y, that it's a big signal that I want to send to somebody. Uh, so what we can do is instead of sending this big signal Y, we can just agree in a dictionary H. And uh, instead of sending y, I can just send x. And on the other side, you can just simply reconstruct y from x. And uh, in this case, I want to send the least number of uh, components uh, for x as possible. So I will want x to be as fast as, as possible. And of course, I want I want x to be uh, a solution of this system or or, or such that the reconstruction of, of the signal it's uh, it's close enough of the original one. Okay, so um, this kind of uh, applications are arising many in image recovery, signal processing, machine learning, and uh, a lot of uh, other topics. So in these uh, settings, uh, we can think of several problems. Okay, so for instance, we can uh, try to minimize the support of the solution, so the number of non-zero components of the solution. Uh, such that the the error received error not to be, or maybe we can do the opposite thing. We can we can just um, try to minimize the misfit error, allowing uh, at, at most uh, some number of uh, non-zero components, so the sparsity is now bounded. Or we can just try to minimize uh, uh, like a weight function, uh, like a, a multi in a multi-objective uh, way. So in uh, in this work, we will focus on problem one, and in particular with uh, uh, the L2 norm, so the Euclidean norm to measure the, the misfit error. So we will want to get a solution as sparse as possible, such that uh, the error given by that solution for the system is not uh, bigger than some constant uh, alpha. Okay? So that is uh, our our problem. So the the outline of the of the talk would be as follows. So I will present some uh, mixed integer programming formulations that uh, are uh, already in the literature. And then we will see how can we uh, improve these, these resolution techniques. Uh, and then at the end, some computational results of, of our uh, post uh, new methods. OK, so um, what we can find in the, in the literature for, to solve this problem in, in this kind of uh, field is, uh, for instance, we, we, we get this, this paper from Bourguignon uh, and others from 2016. And they state a um, MIP, so a mixed integer programming formulation, uh, which is the following. So we, we have, of course, we have, we, we have our, our variables x to, to define the, the solution. And then they, they introduce some binary variables b. Uh, which are like uh, paired with the with the x. So this binary variable in the solution would be one or zero, depending on if the corresponding x is uh, null or not null. Okay. So the the idea is that 
this uh, bj would be one only if the corresponding xj is non not zero okay so with these variables we can just write this formulation so we can um, we so we, we want to minimize the support so it's this is the as minimizing the number of b variables which are uh, in in value one and then of course we should uh, link this uh, this relation between b and x and we can do that with this big m constraint so that's if we take a sufficiently big constant m uh, then we can write this constraint which says uh, that the only way for x to be non-zero is to put b in uh, one okay? uh, uh, otherwise if, if b is zero then x is forced to be zero okay so and this this would, li would link the the variables x and b then these uh, constraints are just uh, constraints to bound the the misfit error given by by the solution x and uh, in particular this constraint uh, is what is uh, like bounding the, the the norm two of the misfit error okay of the sum of the errors on all the on the rows and actually this is a nonlinear uh, constraint but uh, it's, it's it's convex and uh, it uh, behaves well in practice it's uh, we can we can solve this kind of, uh, of problem so it's it's not um it's not uh, very difficult to solve this in in, in a computer uh, but we have one other problem here that is given by this big n constraint so um the the thing is that so we usually in this kind of uh, formulation when we use uh, a big n constraint we kind of uh, know or, or we kind of may know a priori some value for m uh, such that it's not it's not bothering us uh, and when we use this m to bound the values of x but here is is clearly not not the the case because uh, it's not clear how can we uh, find uh, an, a big value for for m uh, in such a way that it's not it won't bother bother the the, the feasible solutions for this uh, for this okay so this is this is quite a a problem at first so uh, what they use in this paper is the following technique to deal with this big m problem so they said initial value for m they solve the mid for that uh, value for m and then they check if some of the values in the solution are like touching one of these uh, boundaries so one of the boundaries of this uh, m box uh, that we are limiting the, the values uh, then they just increase the value of m and repeat and they repeat this procedure until we get a solution uh, with all the values uh, strictly lesser than m okay so this is okay it's a nice approach but uh, there is a problem that actually this this algorithm may stop with a suboptimal solution so we have for instance a really really small example in in, in, our, in two dimensions so if we have this instance uh, so these uh, these guys are the the feasible uh, solutions for for this instance and since we are uh, minimizing the support of the of the solution then we can check that actually the, the optimal solution would lie in the uh, intersection of this feasible set with the axis okay so here and here would be optimal solutions so here uh, and here are the solutions in which uh, at least one of the components is, is zero okay uh, but if we start for instance with a value m of four so we will get uh, this now we will get these feasible solutions which are all equivalently optimal I would say because so uh, the, the support of these solutions is two uh, for all of them so uh, we can in the first iteration we can just pick anybody uh, here so if we just have the bad luck to pick someone here then the algorithm will stop saying okay so since my optimal solution is not touching the, the the boundaries of the box then i finished and this is clearly a suboptimal solution because the the optimal solutions would be around here so um this is a is a problem uh, for this kind of formulations um of course we can get with 
of the bigger informations by doing something like this, for instance. So this uh, constraint will force uh, also will force uh, x to be zero whenever b is uh, zero, and then uh, x would be free to be anything whenever b is one. Okay, so this would be a nice uh, approach to deal to eliminate this big n constraint. But uh, the problem is here as this is really a really ugly uh, constraint to use in this kind of formulations because it's a really uh, non-convex constraint which is not easy to deal in practice uh, with this kind of uh, non-linearities. Okay, so uh, in, in any case, we, we don't have yet an elegant solution to, to deal with this problem with neat formulations. Okay, so our work on this, uh, on this uh, last year was to try to check uh, what we can do to improve uh, this, this kind of uh, approach for, for this kind of problems. Okay, so let me just uh, before starting say so they, they define this um, this forbidden support uh, thing. So we are dealing with with columns. Okay, so we, we are dealing with um, with columns in the in the system that we, we we need to select some of the columns. Okay, so uh, in order to, to get a solution, and we will define first this. Uh, so we will say that a set of columns J is a forbidden support if there is uh, no solution with that support. So if the best thing that we can do uh, when we restrict ourselves to this set, only to this set of columns, uh, the best thing that we can obtain is, uh, is, is bigger than the alpha that we are given. okay? So uh, if J is a forbidden support, then there are no solutions restricted to this set J, okay? So in these uh, terms, we started study Studying these these polytopes and and so we first find this uh, and this this uh, really maybe straightforward uh, inequality which is it's a valid inequality for for this formulation so it says the following if you have a set J okay, which is a forbidden support uh, so this means that we restrict only to columns from J then you won't get any feasible solution then this should happen so this should happen it means that uh, at least one of the columns outside this set should be selected in the solution. Okay, so this, this inequality is, is a valid inequality for, for all the, the feasible set of uh, fe the set of feasible solutions for our problem. Okay, so we can use this uh, inequality in many ways, for instance, to, to improve the formulation, to, to strengthen up the formulation, or to uh, develop some branch and cut uh, approaches, uh, which is uh, using these kind of uh, formulations to, to, to improve the, um, the performance of, of the resolution of these uh, problems. Uh, I, we will do that. But uh, let me just tell you an interesting remark about this, these inequalities that we, we, we could find. So, um, so suppose that these guys are our set of feasible solutions. OK, so this is, this is our, our initial formulation. So this is for the set of feasible points that satisfy all these formulations. Uh, so we have uh, in this sketch, we have so the, the x variables here. We have the b binary variables over here. And let's just do the following. So let's just uh, project this polytope only in the binary space. Okay. So let's let's forget about all the x variables and let's just take this set. In the binary plane, okay. So, with this, what is this? Well, this is this is this this set is the projection. So, it's all the set of binary vectors such that there exists a solution x um, associated to, to those to those vectors. Okay. So, it's, it's just the projection of this polytope on this space. Okay. What we could prove is that uh, if we are given a point here in in this in this uh, polytope then there is a efficient way to find a corresponding solution X for that point, okay? So this is really interesting because if we look at our objective function, our objective function does not um, cares about X actually, it just cares about the V variables, okay? So what we can do here is forget about these polytopes, so forget about these guys and work 
here. So we, we can work only, we can, we can just work in the, in, the, in the projection and obtain the minimum support for that projection. And at the end, when we get the, the, the minimum support for that, uh, for this set of solutions, we know that we can just simply uh, lift this, um, this uh, support and obtain a feasible solution or a, a proper feasible solution. So a proper vector X associated with that solution. Um, and this will solve our problem. The only, the only problem here is that, okay, but how can we define this um, how can we give a, like a, a, a proper useful definition of uh, this projection? Because here we are saying just, okay, it's the projection of this guy. And the thing is that we can do that. And actually the, the inequalities that I uh, presented some minutes ago are, are enough to describe, uh, to give a complete description of these guys. Okay, so uh, this is a really interesting remark about the forbidden inequalities because now, we can state this other new formulation for this problem, which is uh, just forget about the x variables. So use just the binary variables and find a minimum support, uh, given that all the forbidden support inequalities are uh, satisfied. And, and so this, this uh, set of inequalities is uh, describing, uh, sorry, this set of inequalities is describing um, projection and so uh, we can just minimize the, the, the our objective function uh, in, in, in this in this uh, point so and of course at the end when, when we get the, the, the support we just need to leave uh, the support and get the proper solution so this uh, has some pros and some contrasts uh, the pros are that uh, so this is a really nice linear formulation now, uh, even for the, for the Euclidean norm 2, this is a pure integer programming formulation, so it's much more easy to, to solve. And it does not require a big M, so this is not limited to, to, to any uh, mysterious M. Uh, so we can just um, solve this and, and, and forget about uh, the problem uh, about the, the, the big M. Uh, so this is really nice. I can just skip some other things. The only problem here is that uh, it has exponentially many constraints. So this this uh, family of uh, inequalities may be huge, and in practice, uh, we 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 cannot just put, uh, the, uh, all, all these all these inequalities in in a computer to solve. So we to do uh, something, but uh, actually we can deal with this. is is not uh, it's not hard to do it. Um, so the the idea that we propose is the following. So we have our formula with exponentially many of these inequalities. So we propose to okay forget about all these inequalities. Start with an initial formulation with just a few of them, uh, or maybe none of them, and uh, minimize the the support for that uh, initial set of inequalities. So that small set of inequalities. E if the optimum that you get is a forbidden support, we, we, this, we, can, we can check this uh, very efficiently. So if the, if the B that we get is a forbidden support, then uh, it means that it is violating uh, its corresponding forbidden support inequality. So then we just add that, formula, that inequality to the formulation and uh, iterate, okay? At some point, we will get uh, a feasible support and then we just need to leave that and, and we finish. Okay. So I have a like fine drawings here. I will grab a sketch of the, of the algorithm. So uh, we won't optimize on this poly group, okay? But actually, uh, we will get rid of all the, the inequalities describing properly this poly group, and we we will start just with these three blue uh, inequalities, okay? So we will optimize this. And at, uh, in, in every iteration, when we get a, a feasible solution, we will get this. We will we'll check if it's feasible, okay. And if it's not feasible, we will add uh, some, some inequality, which is violated by this point. And we will just continue doing that until some point that uh, our feasible solution would be, our optimal solution would be also feasible, okay. And we just uh, finished um, 
getting our our x. Okay, so this is the the new formulation that we are proposing for this um, this problem and the algorithm to to deal with this uh, with this kind of formulations. Let me just skip some other things. So let's do a quick checkpoint about uh, until now. So um, we uh, showed the big game, the existing big game formulations for this problem are not good. Are not not good because they are not exact approaches. So they they cannot be considered exact approaches for this for this problem because they they may uh, not find the optimal solution. Uh, so then we studied these these formulations. We found uh, these new valid inequalities. And with these new valid inequalities, we uh, show that we could check. Uh, well, sorry, that we could um, describe all the the set of all the feasible supports. And uh, with this set of all the feasible supports, we just uh, propose this uh, so this new integer pure integer programming approach for, for the for this problem, which uh, is uh, to our knowledge is the, the first uh, pure integer programming approach for this for this kind of problems. So about computational approaches, um, we will evaluate three approaches. So we, we will ev evaluate the the original formulations from the literature. We will evaluate our novel um, uh, pure integer program formulation, uh, our dynamically added constraints uh, as the algorithm to solve it, and of also we will we will evaluate um, this uh, BC algorithm, which is uh, which is called a, a branch and cut algorithm, which is the the original formulation, but Using also uh, the forbidden support inequalities as uh, as cuts uh, for to, to improve uh, a little to try to improve a little the the performance of the of the algorithm. So let me just now skip some parts. Okay. So and we will so we will evaluate these these three approaches in two uh, sets of instances from the literature. Uh, in the, the first so the, the idea here is to first to check the solution time, so to see if our approach can the the, the initial um, the, sorry the existing approaches, but then also we we want to to test the solution quality because now so we we, we said before that the, the the existing approaches cannot be considered exact approaches because they have this big M problem. So uh, then we will we will see. Um, how bad uh, the existing approaches can perform uh, in contrast with our uh, new proposed approach, which is actually uh, a, an exact approach, so, so it should find the, the optimal solution. So, um, so in the in the first set of instances, uh, so I, I don't have time to describe all the set of instances, but we what we are seeing here is for different groups of instances. Each line is a group of instances. We are showing how many instances are solved by each method in how in the average time for for that and how many instances are unsolved and the average support found for uh, that uh, uh, set of unsolved instances and what we can see here is that actually our our um, new approach is really really efficient so it, uh, it really beats uh, the, the, the existing uh, approaches for for this problem, for instance, we can check that the number of solved instances of our approach is uh, really, really huge. So, in, in this case, for instance, uh, we solve all uh, of the of the of the instances, and uh, if, if we if we check um, the existing formulations, uh, actually they perform not not quite good. And also, if when we compare the times, uh, we can see that our approach is, is really really uh, better than the the, the original. Uh, when we go now to the other set of instances, which is uh, the idea of this set of instances, is to to, to see how bad can be uh, the solutions obtained by the by the other by the existing approaches. So we can see here that the support obtained by the existing approach is is much more bigger than the optimal support actually obtained by our approach okay so we can see for instance here um, we obtain support an average support of four so four non-zero components of correct 
and the existing approach of the uh, support of average support of uh, 16, which is uh, four times our our uh, solution. So uh, we can see here. So I, I I don't don't have much time. I need to to, to wrap uh, uh, the the results. But here we can see. Uh, all the uh, cases in in our tests in which uh, which were like solved by the free methods. So I mean, uh, all the cases in which the free methods uh, ended within the the given time. So it's not a, a timeout situation. And we can see here that so our approach uh, would would find the, the minimal support which is given by this this column. And we 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 have here. Uh, the ports uh, found by the existing uh, um, uh, formulations from the literature, and we can see that sometimes this this support is really really big. For instance, uh, we have here one one instance in which uh, the optimal support was four, which is the support we we found, and uh, the solution given by the, this uh, formulation was. Uh, like 40, so it was 10 times uh, the, the optimal solution. So, um, in conclusion, uh, it seems that uh, our our solution it's it's really uh, good compared with the with this uh, the existing ones. So, uh, just to sum up, so um, we showed that the previous uh, mixed integer linear programming approaches are not exact, so they have this this problem given by um, by the BM approach. And so we presented this new formulation, this new exact uh, pure integer linear program formulation for this, uh, for this problem. And our results are, uh, seems to be really interesting in, in practice in the resolution. And so what's next? Uh, well, we, I, I, I didn't say it, but um, Actually, what we can, what we could see is that our new formulation uh, has some some interesting uh, structure, which is called uh, um, a set covering uh, structure. Uh, so it would be really interesting to see if we can exploit this this particular structure, which, which is a really known uh, optimization uh, problem, uh, combinatorial optimization problem. Uh, so maybe we can just a lot. So there is a lot of um, of uh, literature for this associated with this problem, and so maybe we can try to exploit some of these uh, um, existing results and try to maybe improve our our results. So that's uh, all. Thank you very much for for your attention. Um, uh, what what uh, do you do? You have an efficient technique to. Uh, uh, identify the J's, or do you do this as you have showed? The, on, the, the only way is to do this progressively or in a kind of greedy approach. You, you sorry, uh, to identify which? To identify the the, 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 the set of forbidden. Um, I don't oh, remember. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So uh, actually, um, the algorithm does not need to find uh, sets because the sets are given by the solutions. Uh, and uh, concerning the the, the the way of recognizing that a set is actually a forbidden support, uh, yes, that is we can we can do it uh, efficiently. And actually, for for in this case for the norm two, um, so it would it would be like this this arrow, okay, um, or maybe the arrow here if if if, if it is not a forbidden support, uh, if, it, if it is not a feasible. And uh, in this case, it's just to solve a least square problem. So, so you can do it really, really efficiently. The, the size of the matrices you saw yeah. is relatively small, isn't it? You have just 20 rows and less than 100 columns. Yes, it's something like that. In, so in the first, um, the first, this, uh, I don't remember. Because, so these, these are not the sizes. Sorry, I, I, I passed this too quickly. Uh, so this, no, in the this, next slide, I think you put the, slide, yeah. the sizes in the next slide. Yeah, in the, in the next slide, yes, yes. So these these are uh, are quite a small uh, matrix. Yes, uh, actually, this this uh, set of instances was uh, intentionally built to, to test how how 
uh, how bad can be the solutions of the existing approaches, even in, in small instances. So even, even in, in instances which should be kind of easy uh, to solve, and we could, we could check that uh, actually uh, it, uh, it doesn't matter, uh, the, the, the formulations are, are getting bad results. So, um, yeah, because but probably the the approach, I mean, your 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 approach is very nice, but probably is limited by the combinatorial aspects of the problem you solve. Yes, yes. So the 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 thing is that this this problem, so uh, it, so it's an empty hard problem, and uh, yes. and actually, so the the the, the only approaches to solve it uh, exactly uh, are like uh, brute force or uh, branch and bound combinatorial branch and bound algorithms. And um, and well and, and and these kind of techniques like uh, um, MIP uh, approaches, but uh, um, so un until until these uh, the, the 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 big M approaches were like maybe I don't know if considered exact, but uh, at least not mentioned that they were not exact. And since they are MIP approaches, so maybe. Anybody says, okay, so this is a this is a formula, an exact formulation for this problem, and actually uh, it, it is not. And um, but but yes, yeah, so the, the 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 problem is is uh, is really challenging in, in terms of uh, of the combinatorial aspect because um, even for small instances, it's really it's, it's really hard to solve. So in the literature, they usually uh, relax the problem. Uh, to solve big instances, the the, the thing, the, the, the only way to do it is to to change the problem. And uh, one thing that they usually do is to change the instead of minimizing the the norm zero, they just change uh, to minimize the norm one, for instance. And uh, that would be really easy because it's just to solve a, 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 a regular MIP and it's kind of uh, easy easy to, to do. Uh, it's sorry, it's a linear program and um, and they could prove in the literature that uh, in some cases, when when the when the system satisfies some conditions, the solution get by the norm one instance is exactly the same that the solution get uh, with the norm zero. And so in those cases, you can solve big instances. But in the in the general case, uh, it's uh, it's really hard. So it's uh, yeah, so. We, you you cannot expect to solve uh, big instances exactly. Okay, thank you, thank you, Diego. Uh, 